how do I record and playback for virtual sound check? And what is virtual sound check? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go back to my I.O. page and I'm going to click on virtual sound check. Virtual sound check is a way to record a signal, record uh, inputs, again, with no processing on them. And then after the fact, be able to bring them in as if they were live signals coming off of the stage, for example. This became really popular uh, in the touring world uh, as touring bands got less and less likely to get off the bus before they had to play, right? So as a sound guy, um, it made life much simpler to be able to record the show from the night before, then go load in uh, and, you know, when everybody's working uh, as opposed to during the show, um, and you could actually pull up the show and inject it in as if it was a, and, and you know, making sure it's an unprocessed, you know, straight feed, and then you can make your changes, make sure your gates are set properly, your compressors, your reverbs, everything is set up. And that way, when the band walks on, hopefully you're really close to where you need to be when the band kicks off, right? So that's kind of how it started. What a lot of people don't think about is how great this is for training purposes. In the house of worship market, 99 times out of 100, you're going to have volunteers that are interacting with this system. And the best way to train a volunteer is not to throw them on the Sunday service. It's to record the Sunday service and then on Tuesday afternoon have them come in and use virtual sound check to be able to bring that stuff in and, you know, learn how to mix. Okay? But however, whatever reason you're using this for, Allen and Heath makes it incredibly easy. On a DLive, <clears throat> you're going to need a card, right? A Waves card or a Dante card, something that you can use a, uh, a sound card on a computer uh, to be able to record to, okay? Uh, with some of the other consoles, uh, you can multi-track directly to a computer like the SQ. You could use that for uh, recording and, and playback, even on the CQ, which I know we're not talking about, but we did a, a class on earlier. There's a built-in SD card that you can do recording and playback. But the process is basically the same across the entire ecosystem. What you're going to do is you're going to select the port that you're sending that and receiving from. So, for example, I have a Waves card in my mix rack in IO port 2. So I would select IO port 2, and then I select which channels I want to record and playback. In this case, uh, I have all of my uh, playback channels here that I am uh, sending and receiving from, right? I have all my channels here uh, that are set up. One of the things to remember is you can also, once you set those channels up, you can set up a scope. So why would you wanna do that? Why would you not wanna play back uh, or record potentially all those channels? Um, maybe you have a rehearsal and the bass player can't show up. If you're on a click and you've recorded their entire show, then the rest of the band can show up and you can just play back just the bass player's part. So you can scope out everything but the bass player, you know, and then that's the only thing that plays back. Um, there's a lot of different reasons my, why you might want to do that. I've set it up here. If I want to record, once I've said this is the IO port, um, I can hit record send. And now it is sending that just like the tie line split I talked to from from the same point is where it's it's splitting that off. Uh, and if I have a DAW on that computer that it's coming to set up to record multi-track, it's just going to do it. Something like Reaper or, you know, Pro Tools. Harrison just released something that works really, really well uh, called Lives Tracks that actually integrates with Allen and Heath really, really well where you can have channels. It will auto populate the channel names for recording and playback. It's a very light thing, not actually a DAW just made like a tape machine for you record and you play back and that's really all you do with it. So that no matter how you do it, at the end of the day, that's it. You hit record send, you hit record on your computer and it's doing it right now. Then when you wanna stop recording, hit it active. For virtual sound check, you hit virtual sound check and now you're in virtual sound check mode. Now you'll notice everywhere I go, there's this orange there telling me that I'm in virtual sound check mode. That way you don't accidentally start your show and you're in virtual sound check mode and nothing is working. So uh, just a little, uh, little bit of safety there, but that's literally it. That's all it takes. You can even put those buttons on one of the soft buttons on the surface, okay, for starting and stopping that. So it's very, very simple, but incredibly powerful.